and uh, we're in order. It's uh, six fifty-nine and thirty seconds. <laughs> Has everyone had a uh, chance to read last month's minutes? And do we have any questions or comments on the last month's minutes? I move that the minutes as written be approved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed to approving the minutes, say nay. The minutes have been approved. And I'll be abstaining since I wasn't here. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Uh, Abstained. Yes. Uh, yeah, we had two abstentions, uh, Michael and Kathy. Uh, welcome, Michael. You're on the committee now. This is very good. <laughs> and welcome, Isaac, our youth liaison. And we don't have, uh, usually at this time, we uh, invite people from the audience to bring their issues to the traffic committee, and we don't have anyone. Um, Trevor, let's have you go now. <laughs> Trevor's going to do the uh, police report. It's a little early in the agenda. It's been moved around a little bit. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have to leave a little early to go to another meeting this evening. So uh, I don't recall whether or not back in November I had the numbers yet uh, or the approval yet for some of the grants that we've currently or we've had in the past. And that would be the DUI grant, the speed grant, and also the <coughs> seatbelt grant. We currently were approved for all three of those. Uh, we have about $4,500 for the seatbelt grant, $5,000 for the speed grant, and I believe $5,000 for the uh, DUI grant. Uh, which we've already been working in our last detail was uh, Super Bowl weekend. So currently right now we are in the middle of a seatbelt blitz. So looking for folks not wearing their seatbelts, speeding, texting, uh, driving distracted, and that will continue for the next 10 days. Um, we have had a um, issue in the last uh, year or so uh, looking for motor officers, I think we have now fixed that. Uh, we have to get some people on board in the police department first. So my, I heard a rumor today that we have four slots for the March uh, Basic Police Academy that we are putting four folks in. So that's four months of training, then four months of additional training once they get out of the academy. Uh, if there are no hiccups, they will be placed on the road sometime. Probably we're looking... Um, about this time next year. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get our motorcycles uh, and, a, and a team up and running prior to that time just because we need to have them on the road filling in the gaps for those officers that are coming out of patrol and onto the bike. Uh, but we do have a plan. Uh, we worked with the chief, uh, the union, and another patrol sergeant, Dave Lede, which some of you know, uh, he sat on this committee prior to me. I sat, it seems like we, every few years, we flip flop our position. So he'll be taking over the traffic team. I will be uh, relegated to the schools and schools only, which will be good because I can concentrate 100% on that. He can concentrate on 100% on being, having a traffic team again, as opposed to just having myself, which has been managing the team and riding when I'm not working in the schools. So that's a, that's very positive, um, but it all hinges upon when we can get those officers through the academy uh, and out on the road. And that's all I have for now. Okay, thank you, Trevor. Yeah, question. Uh, Trevor, I, I don't think you can answer this. Do you, uh, the question would be, is the police chief uh, asking for an increase in his budget to add a police officer next year? And I don't know if you can answer that, but if you can't, you might ask him between now and next month. It, <clears throat> with the, the addition to the water bill, uh, we were given five officers, uh, and I don't know if there's any plans to get any more than that unless we have retirements. Um, I do know that we had a meeting a few months back, and in, in part of the discussion with the traffic team and filling in spots, we kind of looked at the retirements in the next three years, and by the end of 2020, December 31st, 2020, 41% of our department can retire, either retire or be gone by that point in time. So in three years, you're going to see a lot of new faces. 
um, but the challenge right now for all of us is even if the council gave us 10 officers, uh, we don't have signing bonuses, we don't have, um, well, signing bonuses is pretty prevalent right now with a lot of agencies and, and officers that don't have any baggage or any history uh, and that are good officers, they can almost buy their ticket to anywhere in the United States right now. So even if we had the position, um, we had, 20, I think, 22 people apply for six positions uh, this last go around. And of those, I think we only had, and don't quote me, I'm, I'm in the ballpark with the numbers, but I think 16 or 18 of them actually show up to test. And then of that, some of those failed the written test. All of them passed the physical. Uh, and then when we got them to the background stage, I think our first three or four failed. And so we're working off that list. So it's very difficult to come up with the officers, but I can find out, I'll ask. But I don't believe so at this sure. time. Yeah. Any other questions for Trevor? Alex? I just want to, the monster cookie, April 29th, <coughs> will you have enough officers? Or? Absolutely. Okay. I've already got it on my calendar and we, um, we will be there to work it. This is going on, what, the 26th year the city of Kaiser Police Department's been involved. It's been wonderful. Uh, it's so great. Thanks. We've been uh, working on a new project. It's called House Bill 2017. It's called Keep Oregon Moving. And uh, there is money available through the state for various types of projects. And what we started to do last month was uh, come up with some ideas of some projects that might qualify for um, something here in Kaiser. Um, I received another idea today. It's called Safe Walks to Parks, which might be something that we can, they don't have a lot of, uh, grants, but it might be something that we can combine with safe, safe routes to school. Um, we talked about city interconnectivity or neighborhood interconnectivity. Um, let's have an open discussion. Any other ideas on that? Oh, I, I did have uh, um, Kathy Clark, our mayor, and Matt Lawyer went to the same meeting I went to on January 13th at ODOT. And ODOT's having their rules definition phase right now of how these monies will be distributed. I didn't attend the entire meeting. The ODOT campus is huge. I was looking for building Y. <laughs> and it's not next to building X. <laughs> but I did get there, but I got there late. I did learn that um, sidewalks are called infrastructure. They have other types of projects that are non-infrastructure. Um, so I'd like to open it up to open discussion to see if we have any additional ideas for projects that we can do in Kaiser that might qualify for some of these, uh, some of the money coming from House Bill 2017. What types of things did you hear about the rules? Not much, because I was late. <laughs> oh, oh, they've already passed that part. Okay. I, I read a little bit today about the um, Safe House of School rules. Mm -hmm. They're having a meeting on the 13th to revise the current and work on details, and then they'll go out for public comment. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, the application process for that won't start until fall 2018. But one thing I might suggest, I mean, before, um, I mean, of course, you have to look at the rules and see if you got a project that fits with the rules. Um, and part of that also, I think, is you, to have something pretty much ready to go, like in your TSP, and uh, and something that you can just jump fit right into that application process, including getting the school on board. So there's some, some background stuff to do first. But um, so so a couple things about that. The TSP Kaiser is also going to be working on a money that's TSP. I, Think and that's something I think that we could all maybe keep uh, track of that and, and traffic safety plan. I'm sorry, Transport tra transportation, transportation system mm -hmm. plan. Tra it, it's a component of the city's comprehensive plan. But um, knowing what's in that and maybe having some input into that as they go through that public process over the next few months 
would help steer some projects maybe towards you know, safety and bicycle and pads. Um, Kaiser's also got a TGM project going on, which is a, a transportation growth management. It's a grant from uh, Department of Transportation, and it's looking at um, the transportation impacts in the city statewide. And so that's something also that I think we could keep our eyes on and you know have some input into um, some of the results of that report. So there's a lot there's a lot going on right now in Kaiser, and in addition to that. The regional transportation system plan is being revised, and that's Salem, Kaiser, you know, in the metropolitan area. And I'm s currently on the SCATS policy committee, which, which is the Salem, Kaiser area transportation system. And that is the group that will be revising the, the regional plan, so I can kind of keep everyone up to date on some of the projects that are coming out of that and some of the potential money or grants and stuff. So. We can kind of keep our eyes on on that process too, but I think just keeping our all of us keeping up on what's what the rules are going to say and and being a, the public hearings on these different projects, and then we can report back and say, hey, this this opportunity might come up, or even maybe steer some of the plans um, towards areas that we know need attention here in Kaiser. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Pat. Yeah, I think. Some of the things that, um, you know, as representatives for Kaiser that, that we need to look, look for in those rules are going to be the matching funds amount, especially as it, if there's, if there's going to be maybe a sliding scale for larger versus smaller cities, something like that. Um, the types of match that can be allowed, because I know sometimes we um, are able to have the public works staff, in other words, is um, uh, actually performing the work. And so um, that's another uh, element to look at whether whether in, the in match. kind match will be allowed or not allowed. Um, another thing I would uh, say is that, well, two more things I guess. One is that the relationship to an existing plan. Um, I think Mike Jaffe from the Mid Willamette Council of Governments, when he was here last month, he he basically confirmed for us that there is probably going to be a heavy emphasis on that, so that's going to uh, move us more towards looking at, at things that the public public works or parks, our parks and recreation folks are already aware of and then kind of lend our shoulder to mm -hmm. the, the ones that we think are, are most beneficial for biking and walking. Um, the other thing I guess to, to look at well, before, well, in the, when these rules go into the public comment period would be um, you know, how many times have some of these other cities already been to the trough, so to speak? And so whether there can be some uh, preference to, to cities that are just trying to start and improve their program as opposed to um, a handful of cities that have repeatedly received safe routes to yeah. school money in the past. Now, as far as the transportation plans and stuff, both Michael and I are on the planning commission, so. Good. Yeah. Between the, well, we mention bicycles once in a while. A few times, yeah. Yeah. So. I imagine you do. And safe routes, so. I don't, it's along the same line. I don't know if anybody else looked up that uh, sidewalk map that Caleb was going to look at it. Considering they're talking about 2018, fall of 2018, you know, we need to have a plan, even if it's not a great plan, uh, but and we could revise it in the future, to get something down in black and white rather soon. And there's some pretty easy, you can cherry pick things. Cummings, I was, I was looking at the map where Cummings is. There's not a sidewalk within six, you know, <laughs> I don't know what, it looks like a black hole on the map. Uh, there are no sidewalks. And if you think that in most neighborhoods, the kids use the sidewalks with their bikes. And walking. Well, they're, well and they're walking, but if there's no, if you have to ride in the middle of the street or on a sidewalk and you're eight, uh, I would have my kid riding on the sidewalk. Oh, Plus, yeah. there probably aren't that many people anyway. So putting sidewalks in is also uh, promoting the use of bike, more transportation with bicycles. So you've got, if you picked a couple areas, I looked at, at Cummings and... Uh, Kennedy Elementary, and Kennedy is not a very big area between Verda and the school, 
but there's another one, no sidewalks anywhere. Mm -hmm. And if, if you thought of a plan, and I was just daydreaming, but you know, if you pick three roads two blocks apart from random north-south into mm -hmm. Kennedy, you would do a great job. You could say, well, every kid is within three blocks of a sidewalk or five, yeah. whatever the distance is. Well, so like and you could do the same thing at Cummings and say, yeah, we can't put in sidewalks in every street, but we could put in uh, eight streets, uh, four going north, south, mm -hmm. four east, west. Mm -hmm. And you would do, that would be a great step forward to improving the safety for bikes and kids. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure that would sell with the city council or the city government, what? but, but, yeah. It, yeah. you can have a plan that isn't, if we're not funded, okay, but we still have the plan. And, it, you, and you maybe you're going to change yeah. it before you did fund it. Well, it does but, seem like an opportunity for us to take that sidewalk study that you were looking yeah. at that Mike Jaffe mentioned and see where that overlaps with the work that Wayne already did mm. as far as the condi the walking routes to school because that's some Wayne's you know investment of time that's already been done. And you so really tried to use sidewalks, but there are some areas. I'm glad Bob mentioned uh, Kennedy because not only does Kennedy Elementary, the Boys and Girls Club is there. Mm -hmm. And that is pretty well used. So our committee could maybe prioritize, take a look at that sidewalk study, and then make high, medium, and low priorities yeah. for for I, areas I can't, around and town. And I'm not not going to talk about whether it's a, a good budget request or whatever. But the in the budget um, bond coming up from the the Salem Kaiser School, there is clearly in their priority. Cummings Elementary and sidewalks. Yeah. Now, the, theirs would be strictly on their property. their property line, but that's still a pretty good start if we could piggyback a little bit because we wouldn't have to pay as much. And I don't know how you get, I'm not even sure what a plan involves. I mean, first up, you have to pick a plan. We're going to do this, say, at some school, school area. Or the city hall, get everybody to the skate park. I don't care. Pick something. And then I don't know how you caught if you have to have it costed out for the plan or just say we want sidewalks on one side of the road on these ten streets. I mean something as simple as that. Well that's more like maybe a capital improvement to us, but the plan is the you plan know, is there. higher elevation, yeah. looking yeah. at the system as a whole and looking determining at your priorities. Yeah. Hirsch. Looking at What's been done so far as far as the uh, transportation monies, um, and especially in the safe routes to school, schools that are Title I have priority. The Cummings is not Title I. Kennedy is. Okay. Wow, yeah. See, that's uh, good information. So, that, uh, so um, monies would be in the legislature, I think, tried to address what. Pat was talking about the, you know, the people that come, you know, the people that have all the money and all the resources uh, are just going to use up the money, and they were really wanting it to get to the the knots <laughs> yeah. and, and rural areas just as much. But th there was, and it seems to be, and from what I've heard from my oh, safe routes to school people, that Title One is still being kept in the. So, which uh, which of the other grade schools are Title I, do you know? Um, Kaiser Elementary is. Um, it's pretty good <laughs> sidewalk. Yeah, it is. Weddell and um, Kennedy. Um, yeah, I thought Cummings was, but I yeah. found out. Uh, I was talking to Martina, and she says, no, <laughs> nope, we're close, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, so these are all great ideas. Mm -hmm. I have uh, talked to Mayor Kathy Clark. Uh, we were planting trees at the Arboretum. <laughs> and uh, she says the city has um, plans and projects already um, shelf ready. Um, she wanted us to check with uh, Public Works to get a list of projects from Public Works. Mike, do you have anything on that? Um, with talking with Bill, as far as the HB 27, or 2017, um, 
course, Delight Street is top on the list right there. He, he mentioned, though, with all the talk about um, the, the committee out there and, and, and figuring out until those rules for those fundings have been established, there isn't, there isn't, you shouldn't spend a whole ton of time until we know what that is. So um, ranking other things along that when you talk about other projects around and whatnot, um, of course, anything that's that is in the current transportation system plan right now, which deals with sidewalks and spots on Wheatland Road that aren't there, and there's mm -hmm. there's other places around. So that, those are already sites that are specific in that plan. So focus on some of those because they've been called out. So um, that was his that was his thoughts on that. And along the same line, since we're talking about Cummings. Um, He's still working with the school district mm -hmm. to grant that 10 foot, um, to grant that easement, so in hopes to put the 10 foot um, paved pathway in there, which goes from the north end of the school to Dearborn. In, and that's the, phase one, I call. And that's then inside, be phase the fence, two. inside the fence. In, inside the fence, yes. And so that, that talk is still, it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. so. See, if the, the bond measure passes, there would be the sidewalk on the outside. Which, yeah, and then there's stormwater issues, and there's there's a lot going into that, and I, I don't know where that is as far as... Uh, well, that seems like an interesting question. It would be, uh, you'd have to decide if that's a good investment of money to, to put that path in inside the fence, which is not exactly open to the public, and then sort of end up duplicating it with a sidewalk along the street. Well, mm. Um, the risk management people that from the district, it was more of a trail. Mm. You know, it, it, it was, you know, uh, bark dust trail is what they were talking about. Is, am I wrong on that? No, and that was a temporary, that was a school district's idea to, for the interim, until our hopes were a more permanent, if they, you know, if the easement is granted, to put a paved pathway in something a little more. Less maintenance on that, maybe. But yeah. we, either or is. I'm still for something on the outside because I'm also thinking of you just go over there anytime as the McNary students going down Delight as well as the whole neighborhood. And I think the point that if it's on the inside, it's not going to help the whole community. Um, and you may not want high school kids on the elementary campus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they also are losing a lot of parking by oh, putting it on oh the yeah. outside, so that brings up that whole issue. So we kind of just go in a yeah, circle. No. Well, it might be a matter if, if they were willing to give up 10 or 15 feet to put a, a bark path there, then maybe that fence just moves in 10 feet to allow the path to be where the cars are right now, you know, hmm. that sort of thing. But I think at Cummings, you, you've mentioned a lot of if we do this, we have to deal with this and that, and that makes sense. But I think this is Cummings. I can't speak about uh, Kennedy, um, but for sure there, I think we have to work with the school district and do some soft skills training with not only the teachers, but the neighborhood and kids on how to safe walk. So it would be more classroom time or instruction versus just pure engineering. Because no matter what we do, we gotta, there's gonna be somebody giving up something. And parking spots are, are important, I guess. Well, if we, knowing now that Kennedy is a Title I school, that might be a, a, another focus for us, rather than Cummings and McNary um, with their own issues. Um, another, uh, you know, another um, aspect, I mean, we've had a turnover in the ODOT transportation safety, but when the Julie Yip, before she retired, she was the one that went with me to talk to the principal, and we, she thought that coming school was, fit very well into the type of situation that needs a, a safe routes action plan and try to get all the all the different interested parties together into a multi-pronged planning process that would include the access along Delight Street plus everything else about the, the, the um, 
pick up and drop off and walking and biking mm -hmm. to the school. So um, that might be something to take up with the, the new pr the new person in the transportation safety and, and see if they're, because they used to have like mini grants to do that. So we um, see when that opportunity is. I went to up. the traffic safety um, mm -hmm. planning meeting and it's Heidi Manlove, okay. who's the new person. Um, the impression I got from talking with her and her boss, there's not a lot of money grants right at the moment. They're all kind of, everybody is waiting for these, how these transportation grant uh, application process and stuff goes, so. I was thinking of the, the federal money that was already allocated to them rather than the state money the, that the new I just got the impression money. they just didn't have much money right at the moment. Okay. Um, Mike. So one thing, you know, I, we would like to stretch the, the dollars as much as we can. And, you know, not only is sidewalks important for a safe route to school, but vehicle speeds are an issue. Um, one of the things that cities are doing are building the ball bouts at the corners, especially on wider streets and busier streets. Maybe if we could put in for money to do um, bollards or some type of cheaper, quicker ball bout. And that's like kind of like a test case too to see how people react to it and see if it really does affect. Mm -hmm. um, like traffic speed. controlling devices to s slow people down? Well, so, so at the corners at the where people would be, your students would be crossing, you'd have the bollards that would create a simulated ball bout with the sidewalk. Um, so it gives people, you know, drivers a little more condensed and tight space to drive through, which slows them down, gives the kids a little more protected area. Obviously not as protected as a sidewalk would be, but on the cheap, you could go, you could cover more areas kind of piggybacking on sidewalks that you are, that we would build. Okay. Uh, Debbie, you had a, a flyer here. Do you want to say anything about this? That is what was uh, just three schools that were distributed at the uh, council meeting on Monday from the parks or from the school board for the measure that's coming up, the bond measure. The reason I printed out those three schools was because the um, suggested improvements included things that this committee has discussed <laughs> in the past. And I thought you would be interested in seeing that they are considering doing those. It was Kennedy, I think, had the the uh, rerouting of the, or the, the Kaiser, yeah. Kaiser for looking at uh, the drop-off section and then the, there was some sidewalks around Cummings and there was also the improvements at McNary. Okay, Marlene, were you at that meeting? Yeah, I, I, I'll discuss it more in okay. full when you get to my report. Okay, thanks. So we've got lots of ideas. What I would like to see us do as a committee is to further define these ideas. Uh, David, you mentioned Kennedy. You sidewalks at Kennedy. Uh, write down yeah. how many sidewalks we need or what where streets and where, and where okay. if you can put that together. Um, so if you have an idea, let's see if we can further define those ideas. Um, we're still waiting for the rules to be determined, but let's see if we have some good ideas that we can put forward when the rules have been defined. Um, here's number six, projects, programs, planning for summer. You guys know what that is? <laughs> I'm not familiar well, with that. Well, it's the MAC gave. Is um, that city stuff? Or? Yeah, activities. When's the fire hall event? Oh, okay, okay. May? Okay. You know, the. This year. Yeah. <laughs> This spring. Yeah, I was thinking it was May. I don't know why I was thinking May. April. But. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, okay. That's where we do helmets and okay. give out bike yes, safety. Yes. Yeah, I think you've done it yes, with I have. this. 
um, July, and again, I don't have the date because it's the Boys and Girls Club, and Mike, did they, did they get a grant again, the Boys and Girls, to do Wild Wild Wreck? I'm assuming they do, did. Well, they do the Wild Wild Wreck and they do a, a bike module. Um, two days, one week, two days the next, following week. Yeah, I'm not sure that they would know right now. I bet you they won't know until April on that first. Oh, so oh. you could probably contact them before then. Well, I, it next. just, I don't know the dates and right. stuff, but right. it's generally in July as part of the Wild Wild Wreck Glenn, program. Yeah. yeah, and we participate in that. And over and over again, um, I don't well, whether it's been at the um, open houses or whatever. The, there's been a question of uh, adult bike skill training, <laughs> and um, I've never pursued it. But the issue came up again from a, a resident that in my neighborhood who said, "Well, I'd like to do one for you know young adults, adults." And I said, well, I got all the equipment for, you know, kids, but that would be an interesting lesson plan. And it, we could always do it some weekend here at City <laughs> Hall. So, you know, but, and that's, and then um, Surfest, that's in September, and that's another helmet fitting. And, uh, and Northwest Hub is here to do a lot of repair <coughs> and stuff. Those are the events that I know that we're um, been asked. River to Fest. I thought that got canceled. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, at the at the last meeting, um, Joe Tillman asked. He said the Southeast Kaiser Neighborhood Association asked to get information about bike rodeos and safety programs, and that's when you asked me to put that on the agenda. So I think you were, the plan was to kind of toss around some ideas of some new programs okay. that you could start up that maybe would um, be facilitated through the different Kaiser neighborhood associations. Okay. okay. We right. got so lo lots of projects and uh, programs that we need a calendar for them. And, and Joe, uh, we can do yeah, one uh, for small. kids right now, you know. Okay. Um, we just have to pick a, a location, and if it's at the yeah. Mennonite Church, it would be great. Okay. I'm assuming then that you have not heard from Rachel or Angie or Ken, because Ken was talking to them. In fact, he kind of jumped the gun and gave them the information, and I didn't get the chance to give it to them. <laughs> no. no, I have not. So uh, I'll maybe they, I'll talk to them again. Did they contact you at all? No. Okay. And if we do something there, it definitely all, as many of us yeah, that can participate is needed because we, we need, well, you've been at them, so you know that it takes a few people and. At least two. At least minimum. But if uh, uh, knowing it's South, it's knowing, knowing Southeast uh, Kaiser area, there'll be a number of kids that would show up. Mike, is there a public work? Demonstration, open house. party, yeah. open house. Yeah, with in conjunction. Yes, <laughs> in conjunction with the fire department. Oh, okay. So we'll so be doing that, and that's I think that's that May time yeah, that yeah. we've been talking about. But so we're yeah, we're we're on board to do, do okay. that again. Let's uh, move on to committee member input. Kathy, you have another meeting, so let's have you go first. Me? Yes, you, Kathy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, well, I guess just in addition to what I already talked about, um, there's another national and state priority for safety, safety performance standards, and which fits right in with our mission. And uh, I think um, the SCAT staff, including Mike Jaffe, is very interested in uh, in helping local jurisdictions come up with safety plans. Um, Salem has a safety, a pedestrian safety plan, but not necessarily a safety plan. I guess other cities like Corvallis and some of the other cities who are maybe more progressive <laughs> have safety plans. But, and the SCAT staff has been doing a crash report 
over the last year. And when they finalize that and they come up with some suggestions about how to work with local jurisdictions, maybe um, maybe we could have him back and uh, see if there's some just general ideas, um, you know, how you can improve slow down speeds and like Michael said, ball belts and ways to um, improve safety, especially as we're working on the river road um, plan. I mean, that's too fast, too much traffic, too, too narrow sidewalks right through the middle of town. And I think maybe there's some things we can do, we can suggest um, that, that would improve the safety of the main street through our town. So that, that would be coming up too, I think, in the next That would be summer sidewalks fall. and separated uh, bike lanes. And well, who knows? There's just, all kinds just of Just putting things. that idea out there. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that would be wonderful if we had bike money to buy or. right away, I guess. But you could narrow it to three lanes mm -hmm. and then you'd have room for but Or bicycling. develop the parallel bike routes that are good on a, a on block each or side. two off each side. Right, <laughs> on Verda and yeah. Yeah, there's just things to think about. And, and I don't know if you also talked about this last week, but the, um, there is money um, for a study of Wheatland Road and how to, um, you did talk about that, okay. Yeah, so um, a lot of opportunities out there, just you know, getting our hands on them and keeping track of them. Uh, Wheatland Road's another place that's very limited in sidewalks. Uh, right. well. I Better than when I was Better growing it used up. to be. Yeah. <laughs> actually, the only problem, with, the biggest problem with Wheatland Road is there's actually enough sidewalks to put sidewalks all the way down one side. But you go two blocks on the right, and then three blocks on the <laughs> left, and five blocks on the right. And yeah. it's, it's, it's true. It's not continuous. It's yeah. not continuous. Yeah. At least that's the park matter. Well, no, it's, it's, it's all the way out, all the way out to the city limit. Mm -hmm. Joe, do you have uh, anything from committee member input? Um, just a couple things that came up here that I that came to mind. One was um, with this the uh, discussion of adult uh, bicycle classes. Is I know the Street Trust has curriculum online, or that can be emailed to us, so it's available out there. We don't need to reinvent that wheel. Um, and the other thing was the. I don't know if it's all of Portland or large portions of Portland, they are trying to push um, speed limits down to 20 in neighborhoods, and that is another thing that would be, I think, a relatively low cost, or certainly low Didn't cost thing that we that? could do. Uh, it's something passed, I don't know what the extent was. Something else we could put on the, I would go on the agenda. Well, it would, that part would be interesting to find out if there was actually a change in speed just with a with a change of, of the signage because in in my history of working on that pe people drive according to the conditions mostly so you know if you have m more parked cars along those wide neighborhood streets then people will slow down <laughs> and I don't know uh, if it's something we can do unilaterally it seems like that there was a, a legislature bill that allowed Portland to do that, right? So I don't know if we'd have to go through some special procedure with the legislature or commission or petition ODOT or, I don't know. Well then somebody's gotta pay for the sign. Oh. Which I always bring up because signs are so damn expensive. And the enforcement. And the, yeah. well, yeah. what do you want to talk about? <laughs> enforcement of it. Yeah. We'll assume everybody obeys the law. David, you got the floor. Why don't you go ahead and give us your committee member I input? Other information. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nope, nothing new. Uh, Pat, anything new, please? Uh, nothing to report. Okay. Uh, Hirsch, anything new? Well, um, something you want to let us know about? Um, the Oregon Active Transportation Summit is March 15th to 16th up at Portland. Um, I've never been to one, Pat. Have you? Went? Oh, yeah. Okay. Several. Uh -huh. I'm thinking about. I'll have to look at my schedule, but I, I thought I'd go. This is different than the um, ODOT traffic safety that's generally, I think, uh, Kathy and I went to it a couple years ago in Portland. That's a real good one. That's generally in October. This is more nonprofits involved. Yeah, ODOT's involved, too. So Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's ODOT, it's, uh, 
Portland Transportation regional, and TriMet. Regional and local governments and, and advocate groups. So there's, in my experience, there's been a good selection of, of different types of workshops that you can go there and then you'd be mixing in with you know, people from other cities and, and people that are coming in from the, the citizen advocacy group as well as policy makers, high and low. Yeah. I just wanted to let everybody yeah. know the, about it. Um, but some I've registrations seen. online, Oregon Active Transportation Summit. And I, I, I haven't confirmed, I haven't really looked at my schedule, but I might go. It's in other words, they'll probably have, you know, we're, like we say, we're on the, the scenic bikeway. There's likely to be, uh, there's very likely to be a scenic bikeway um, workshop and component in there where we could, you know, if we send some delegates from Kaiser that we could get in on that and see what other other cities that well, are along a designated route like that, what what types of things are they doing to 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 help their businesses and help the cyclists, or, you know. So I probably need to go because I have a meeting on Sunday in Albany with <coughs> the people from the Strawberry Century and stuff about promoting another scenic bikeway out towards the Lebanon area um, and connecting with the Willamette, but out to Ale Lebanon and back. And they're working with Alex, but they need more support and, and stuff, so. What was the dates of the summit? Uh, March 15th to the 16th. Okay. It's midweek. That one has, has been kind of alternating. They'll do Portland. It's, it will alternate between Portland and Salem. It's actually at the at the Oregon Zoo. Oh. And I know there's conference rooms and stuff, so it's at the zoo. So at least, at least it would be appropriate for me to be at the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, sir? Um, other than the monster cookie is April 29th. And um, we're officially changing the route on the return. And be, traditionally, we would go through Kaiser shoreline along River Crest, over and then back onto R River Road to Commercial and Commercial down to Gaines. Take a right turn on Gaines. The city of Salem closed off a lane on Front Street. We did that on the market over to winter and down. Um, that to do the barriers and close closure has cost the bike club about $700 every year. We were looking at and talking with Alex and we've modified the route. It will come through Kaiser along shoreline on the return, but it'll turn on Mambrin, which is the scenic bikeway and over to Cherry, Cherry down to, uh, what's it called, uh, Auto Group yeah, Road. Maple. Ma and yeah. turn, it turns there and then into onto Maple. And the um, Salem Bike Boulevard advocates, that's yeah. their proposed route for a bike boulevard, which some of the early planning has been done, which is getting money for the building. So they will be um, showcasing that for us and helping the bike club with any road guards that we might need. It goes right to the capital. And then right, Maple down, do a turn you know, on to winter. That automatically saves the bike club $700. And it, it'll showcase a very pretty part of North Salem. Okay, so Monster Cookie, a 62 mile ride. And been going we've on for 42 years now? 42 years, and we've also officially recognized that we have a short route, which people have done for years. A lot of people will ride to the first rest stop and turn around and ride back. I didn't, we, know, there, I didn't know there was a short route. Now there is. <laughs> and that's a 30 Where, where's the first rest stop? Uh, it's at the old Newsom Farms, which is Brian Zielinski's farm, right at the uh, corner of where River Road, and French, French Prairie. Prairie. So right Prairie. there, yeah. Yeah, and um, they have been such gracious hosts over the years, but a lot of people just said, I'm enough, turn around and they ride back to Salem, and we've just officially said, you know, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you paid. 
Yeah, they've paid and, and <laughs> they they get, get a handful of cookies there and yep. so, but the route out will be exactly the same as it's always been. So we're not changing anything. Is there going to be a half cookie T-shirt? Half cookie. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the the T-shirt this year is, is uh, a maroon color and. It's been designed by Randy Thomas, who works for the city of uh, uh, Salem. And unique design, good, good design, but it's going to be a maroon T-shirt. That's it for me. Okay. I uh, went to that meeting uh, January 13th. Uh, I got there late, so I didn't really go to the meeting. I didn't learn a whole lot. But uh, that's really all I've done for this month. But I, uh, I do want us to define our possible projects in more detail, if we can. Um, let's move on. Yeah, Mike, Mike. anything? Yeah. Well, welcome, Mike. Okay. What made you want to join the uh, traffic committee? It's my pleasure. I'm having worked with Hirsch for a few years now. <laughs> I've uh, wanted to join, but I, at the time I'd been on another committee, so I was able to thank you treasure committees. thank you Trevor and now I get to work with Hirsch again <laughs> or still <laughs> he, he's still he's a great guy yeah. <laughs> I need a note to take it home for that <laughs> <laughs> he is a nice guy at Marion let's see <laughs> uh, Mike can we have a staff report um, public works I can tell you that I'm enjoying the uh, the weather we've been having lately, and the suns are the it's brighter in the morning, and after work it's not pitch black, so that's that's pretty neat. Um, our stormwater crews are out doing uh, storm repairs. That's what we do this time of year. We have a contractor go through and TV inspect a certain percentage of our storm lines, and then that generates a TV report, and we rate those and go through and uh, do the high priority ones and so on and so forth. So. Um, couple guys are busy doing that and on the street side my uh, my lonely street guy is busy uh, changing out street signs and upgrading them to current standards and also taking care of those that uh, have been vandalized and those that have been ran over um, in traffic accidents and whatnot so that keeps them pretty busy we had a street light knocked down on Sam Orchid way a couple weeks ago and uh, we have parts on order to get that back up and going so um, everything else is just just moving along and everything's going well so that's my report all these uh, marks on the street on uh, River Road North and Wheatland the those Zorro marks the Z's is that for the fiber optics yeah okay and that's, yep. and that's still going on in there in front of your house now yes they are making, a bunch, of, <laughs> making yeah. a bunch of noise over the hill and <laughs> exactly yeah. that's why I mentioned is that for the school district I heard it's for the schools. They're putting in fiber optic oh, cable okay. for the schools. I don't know if for it's all the private, schools or what. They're online. Okay. But to do that, they have to mark where the gas is and where the sewage, all the, everything has to be marked before they can drill or lay the cable or whatever yeah, they're doing. So. Directional board and track where it's going and they got to be careful and make sure that they don't hit any of our water services or, or gas ga lines. Or, or, or gas lines. They, they came to my house today. They started at my gas meter and measured. They have a some type of meter that can detect the line and all the way down the driveway. Yep. I learned that my gas line comes down the driveway and then it goes across the driveway <laughs> <laughs> and then goes down again. Okay, so, but that's not your group. No, that's not. That's an outside. That's a contractor. separate, and it's not. It's not associated with City of Kaiser. That's a private contractor doing that work for the for the school district. So. Okay. Very good. Anything else, Mike? Nope. Thank you for your update, uh, Marlene. Can we have a City Council update, please? Yes. Yeah, so January was a slower month than normal is, but we still did a little bit. Um, the Salem Kaiser School District came and did um, a little presentation to the City Council on Monday night. Um, and, and brought everything Kaiser about what upgrades, if the school bond were to pass, what upgrades that they plan on, the priority in which they're going to do them. McNary is probably the number one priority on that whole list. Um, and you'll see the list of things they're going to do, including including coming in 
um, off of Chamaba and making that whole thing better, like a lane just for buses and drop-offs and, you know, more parking. They're going to they they're tr want to purchase the land uh, behind uh, St. Edge Church there mm -hmm. um, and make and move the softball fields and soccer fields to there, and then they can do all those adjustments oh, wow. to the That's front. So, cool. it, you know, it's a pretty big project, and they got a lot of those. And then, of course, Kaiser Elementary, there's always been an issue there. And and to, and then the sidewalks, obviously, at Cummings to kind of, and like you said, that school property, but it's still something better, at least for the drop-off and for the safety of the kids. Um, the Chamber of Commerce um, is going to have what they call a community presentation. Um, they have these every couple of months uh, here at City Hall, and so they're going to have uh, that community conversation will be on March 22nd here at City Hall at, I believe, um, 6 p.m. I'll have to look. Stay tuned for that to come out. I'll know more next month, but I think it's going to be 6 p.m. here at, at City Hall. And that will be everything about the school bond and how it affects uh, the Salem-Kaiser schools or Kaiser-Salem schools. And it'll be a question and answer period for people who have, you know, what's going on, what are you doing, when are you doing it kind of thing. Because they'll have the dates on there and everything. Do so, uh, the voters have to vote on this bond or does Kaiser get to... Oh, no, it, no, no, vo voters will be vote, uh, voting on the bond, I believe it's in May. Mm -hmm. I think they're voting a special, or the primary, or whatever it is in May. It's May election. Yeah. The May election. <laughs> it's from my understanding, that's when it is. So that's why they're having these community conversations and coming around, and we want to know what they were doing for Kaiser, because everybody asks questions. Well, what's it doing for our school? What's it doing for our school, right? So that's they're going to have all the information. They'll have maps, everything showing all the things that they're going to do to the schools because they'll add a new wing also to McNary. They're going to upgrade every single high school in Salem, Kaiser, to 2,200 so that they can handle 2,200 students. Well, that's better than where they're at. Way better than where <laughs> they're at. Right, get all rid of all those outdated mobiles and well, all those kind of things. So anyway, that was a good, it was a good presentation. So it was everything about that. Um, then uh, the Greater Gubster neighborhood, they came, this is the time of year where the neighborhood associations come and they give us their annual reports of what they did last year, the things they've accomplished. Obviously, these are busy neighborhoods. Uh, West Salem, just this way, and, and, and Southeast is really picking up steam, and, and um, um, Gubster came and gave their report, and uh, record-breaking year for the Gubster Lights, uh, $28,000, over $28,000 in cash, and over 27,000 pounds of food to Marion County. Wow. So kudos and 81% participation on the route. So kudos to the Gubser uh, neighbor and the city of Kaiser. Actually, we, we all do a good thing and, and, and we're the biggest contributor, I think, to the Marion County uh, Polk, our Marion Polk food share. So uh, we changed that. Um, there's just a bunch of, if you guys have noticed, there's new businesses popping up everywhere and they're still continuing to do so. Uh, we had another, um, uh, permit for that little red building that used to be the tap place is now going to be a small convenience store. They're going to remodel it, so that's going to make that look a little bit better. Um, down Chamala, uh, next to, right past the Kaiser Times there, you'll mm -hmm. see that red building, right there on the left. So, so uh, and then uh, Aroma's Restaurant opened, Gyro's opened, um, of course, Wearmart opened, and <laughs> you see all that traffic there. Um, uh, Hop Jacks is getting ready to open. Um, so is Cafe Yum, and there's one other place over there. I mean, but it's just, it's going crazy, so. And the most important one, human being open. Uh, yes, well, that's right, yeah. Oh, yes, and the most important one, human being open. So, But notice, though, and, and this, since this is a traffic safety, notice this traffic is, I mean, with all these new things coming in, the traffic is getting, is getting more and more so. So, anyway. I think that's that's about all. We have a slow, hopefully it's, it's gonna start picking up. February is a short month. We got budget coming up pretty soon, so stay tuned for all good things budget. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor. Uh, Isaac, our youth liaison from McNary High School. Can you uh, give us an update on the bike racks or? I've reported it, I, I've suggested it to a scout master and like an Eagle advisor to tell them that it could be a possible um, Eagle Scout project. And I haven't really gotten um, the school on board with it, but um, I'll keep trying. Okay, thank you, Isaac. Uh, Hirsch, you've got something about McNary uh, bike racks? Kind of. Favorite topic, I think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 
Um, uh, the school district contacted John um, Yoder, who is the director of the Straub Environmental Center, to do a project with some local high school students to promote bike to school um, day in May. And uh, John has met with, and it's like representatives from every area. And one of the projects that um, his work group of kids um, brainstormed was doing a bicycle rack parking inventory of all the high schools in Salem, uh, Kaiser. And of course, I brought up the issue of um, McNary. Mm -hmm. And he, his eyes kind of perked up on that. And he is, he was supposed to be, he told me, this was a week ago, he was going to talk with um, the CET, the center because they yeah. yeah because they built a bike rack for um south salem high school that was just a beautiful rack cost was low and you know kids learned how to build with metal so um i don't know if you've ha had anything at mcnary but it was john uh, yoder from um, the straub center and so if not he was going to talk with uh, mr jasperson so you may want to contact Mr. Jasperson on that one. If, I mean, if you do, and if you do get a, a meeting on that with somebody with the school, I mean, I'd be willing to go with, you know, attend with you if you want also. Since I was one that brought this up, you know, kind of came in your lap because of something I said last time, I know. <laughs> but um, uh, Hurst, you spoke about the um, Active Transportation Summit and one of the workshops, in fact, it was a, a, a mobile workshop where we went out and looked at stuff. One that I attended a few years back was on uh, a an evaluate a rating system for bike for bike parking at schools. And somebody had developed this. So when you go there, then you have the different categories and you look up I what what type of bike rack it is, um, and where it is located on in, on the school grounds. Is it in a place that's visible, maybe from classrooms or offices? Is it is it covered or not covered? Is it is it lit or not lit? That kind of thing. So there's a, maybe half a dozen factors that you that a team a little group of people can go to and score. So so maybe that's the sort of thing that these people that you mentioned would be using as a, a rating tool like that. That's yeah. John is you know he's been a science teacher with the school district and mm -hmm. he's been involved with the uh, Straub Environmental Center for I don't know how many years. But when he, the kids mentioned that maybe we should do a, um, a route uh, evaluation of how to get to school like you've done, as well as the, the bikes. And then, of course, I mentioned the bike racks. I mentioned, you know, the one at McNary is the one I had when I'm 1972. So, but uh, I'll try to go to the summit and see if there's any information. John was going to get back to me later on because he, he was, he's, He's letting the students direct what projects they want to do. He's not saying that that's what they're going to do, but he thought that was a good one that they could do. Because there's clearly a need out at this end of town. Uh, Sal Salem took care of theirs, but w I don't know about North or um, right. Sp Sprague or even West Salem. So the idea would be a bike rack, bike rack inventory for all the schools in Kaiser? No, just the high schools. Oh, just high schools. Well, that, yeah. I mean, I had the inventory, but no follow through on that a couple of years ago about doing it for the the grade schools too, because that would, you know, if you're going to tell, ask people, convince them to ride their bike, they're probably not going to do it unless they've got an appropriate and secure place mm -hmm. to park. So it would be worth doing it, like getting one of these assessment tools and doing. All the schools. Yeah, yeah because Kaiser Elementary, their bike rack is out by the street. It's not even near the building. Yeah, so and who's I always like, put your bike how, out why would our risk? kids want to ride our bikes if they got to park out by the street? I right. think the, the best one, excuse me, the, the best one is at Weddell because it's inside a caged area right there in the front. Uh, but again, it's a brand new, a newer school, and they, 
Um, but that but that would serve for the kids. But what about uh, staff or again? Like us, um, I think when we're talking bike racks, we're not talking just the students. I think we have to consider staff are going to ride their bikes too. I know when our kids were going McNary, uh, member Mont Rock, he rode every day. Or parents visiting. Parents or visiting or, or guests or whatever. Um, and right now the bike rack at McNary is the worst I've ever seen. Well, Clearly. I, I think I just had experience with that this morning because I go to Cummings every Thursday to read to the kids and I always ride my bike. And I fastened it to the back of the of the um, bench that's outside because yeah. the, there's no bike rack there. Well, today I noticed they brought the bike rack from way behind where you can't get into the school. At least they have it out front, but it's those kind that you it's put the your old front needles. tire in and you can't loft your frame. Um, and if you know you get three bikes in there and they fall over and your and your you, wheel that, gets that's stuck. That's a frame. Uh, and there was rim. not one single bike in it either. No, that, well, that would score low in that assessment. That type of rack is like a zero. I mentioned to the principal yeah, yeah. when we were there at Cummings, just as you go in that door that leads into the administrative offices, I said, and it's under the eave of the building, right. I said, this would be a perfect place to put two or three staple style racks so that somebody like me coming to a meeting at your school right. can go right there. Well, they did bring the rack over there, but it's not a very good rack. Yeah, but yeah something, something to think about. I yes. Think definitely. And I too am willing to work with you and, and, and stuff, but check with uh, the principal because I think John may have talked with him. Okay, thank you, Matthew. Or Isaac, rather. Yeah. Isaac. <laughs> okay, uh, that's all I have. We're adjourned. Thank you for coming and uh, appreciate all of your great ideas.